Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to look at a really, really useful command that you have on Linux and Unix called script. Script does what you might expect. It records a shell session for you so that you can look at the output that you saw at the time, uh, and you can even record with timing so that you can have a real-time playback. I'll show you how to do both in this video. Script is really useful. It comes in handy in the strangest kind of times and places. Sometimes you're on a server and you think to yourself, oh my god, my team actually is missing documentation on how to do this specific thing. Let me just do that right now. And you can just type in script, and then you can do some stuff, whatever that is. And then you can hit control D or type in exit, and it will say script done, file is TypeScript. And there you go, that TypeScript file, which was just created, contains everything you just did after typing script and before hitting Control-D. So that recorded that little session. This is really useful not only for documentation, but also for, for example, you're on call, you need to prove that you did something in response to an incident, or you're dealing with like legal stuff and PCI and you need to record each session that you have in, for example, your PCI regulated environment. It's also useful for, for example, if your developers have some kind of like hard to replicate bug and you happen to come across it on one of your systems, well, this is a great way to record yourself interacting with that in real time so that people can start theorizing on what it might be and what you saw without a lot of copy and pasting into text files. Okay, so let's get right into it. I actually just recorded my first script. If we just less this file, you'll see that it includes the shell output that I got, everything that I saw in my shell. And it also has like special characters, line feeds, that kind of stuff, characters that mean something to my shell. Now I can't replay this. So the simplest invocation of script is not all that useful. The TypeScript file is a default file name. So the first thing we wanna do is probably change that default file name. So we'll say script, and we can do that by just naming a file as first argument to this. Let's call it my script log. Now we can do more stuff and then type in exit or hit control D again. And now you can see it's been saved not as the TypeScript file, but as the myscript.log file. And just like before, this file contains sort of the same thing, output, input that we gave the shell and special characters. Now let's look at what I think is the most useful feature uh, of the script program. So we're invoking script, passing an argument, the name of the file that we wanna write the script log to, and then we're passing this timing equals argument and telling it where to keep the timing log. If we do this, my script log, we're gonna go ahead and say, uh, why don't we do some interactive stuff? So we're gonna look at HTOP for a while, scroll down, quit this, maybe run netstat, echo hi again. And then we'll hit control D to terminate the recording. So let's have a look at my script log again. It's gonna look a little bit different this time. Now this is a little bit less readable with a uh, pager, like less or more, or a text editor. So what we wanna do is view this recording. We do that with the script replay command. And we simply pass the S argument to the script. And then for the T option for timing file, we can pass it this way, or you can do a dash dash timing equals works out to be the same thing. So now I'm, my hands are off the keyboard. Nothing is happening. I swear, I wish you could see this, but my hands are off the keyboard and it's just replaying everything that I just recorded in that shell session in real time. So you can see the spacing between each character that I type and also exactly the timing of output coming onto my shell or my terminal. So you'll see it ends with a, with a new line there. We're back out uh, interactive here. So that was your first run of a script command along with timing information recorded and then a script replay. Okay, so you can see here, this is the timing log that just helped us replay this script log, which was looking so crazy. And so that's timestamps and number of characters that were changed. And that works together with 
your script log to turn this into what we just saw. Check the description for uh, the commands that I'm using. I'm leaving a log, ironically, of all the things that I'm running here in the shell. So you can just copy and paste these and you're good to go. Finally, I want to look at script-c, which lets you execute a single command and then save the output of that command in a log file. So in this case, we're saying script-c for a single command. We're quoting our command because it's got some arguments. Um, if you don't quote this, it would just run netstat and then ignore this. So this says script, run a command, this is your command, and then place the output of that command in netstat log. So if we run this, just like running netstat, and then we can see that by inspecting netstat.log. This is useful for if you're using script from a shell script, like a bash script or something. If you like need a record of the output of some command, um, and you don't just want to write it into that script's standard out or standard error or whatever, this is one way of doing that. So you might find something like this. Obviously, you do not want to run script interactively, that is, as a recording without this dash C uh, in a non-interactive uh, shell, script file, whatever, because this will hang. This will hang the script. It will keep listening for input for a very, very long time, um, and your, sh your shell script or whatever will never exit. So just a quick review again to record, you would say script and then your script name. For timing, you would say dash dash timing equals and then the timing file you want to write in addition to that. Or you could just say dash t timing file like this. To replay that script, you would simply say script replay from my script file myscript.log, which I wrote to up there, and from the timing file time.log. And again, this is what that looks like. I'll let this run. Thanks again for watching. I hope that's useful. Definitely try that out yourself a few times. There's all kinds of interesting uses for this. If you want more stuff like this, please remember to like, subscribe, visit the website. There's actually a companion article on the uh, tutorialinux.com website to go along with this video. And uh, thanks again for watching. See you guys in the next one. Peace.